Hi, welcome everyone. So welcome to the California Data Collaboratives Wavelet demo. We're thrilled that you're here. Uh, for those of you that aren't as familiar with the CADC, I'm gonna give just a high level overview of who we are, and then I'll start sharing some of the Wavelet features. We'll go over some demo use cases. I'll show you how to access the software, and then give you a preview of what's coming up with version 3.0, and then share a couple of events that we have coming up that we hope you'll join us for. So the California Data Collaborative is a nonprofit. We're staffed by data experts, but we're really governed by our members who are water agent agencies and managers that are really striving for data-driven, sustainable water management. We have 23 current members and we're growing. Our members range from small retail water agencies to large wholesalers and groundwater basin management districts. So what do we do? Well, collaboration is a is in our name. And so we really do focus on membership and connecting people within the water agency so they can figure out how best to use their data. So we've got retail water suppliers and wholesale water suppliers as our members, but we collaborate outside of our membership with academics, businesses, and nonprofits. We also have a couple of products that we've produced with our members' input. So that's really what we're going to talk about today. So for our members, we have um, two products. We have the analytics platform, consumption platform, as well as an AMI query and software platform. And then we also have the free product Wavelet, which we're gonna talk about today. Um, and then we do some consulting, sub-consulting. We're uh, you know, act as advisors on different task force. And we also kind of consider ourselves like a research hub where we try to connect academics and researchers with local water suppliers who are trying to solve relevant issues. And we also do a lot of education and outreach. So we host webinars and workshops and our annual data summit. So we're here to talk about Wavelet. Um, it's our update to an existing software that we've had for several years. And essentially this platform uploads a water retailer's consumption data, their bill data that goes into the Wavelet software. And then that information is displayed in different dashboards and visualizations ultimately to help you make better decisions. So you can compare use trends over time compared to local weather and demographics. You can look at water use compared to efficiency standards and budgets. We also have a, a simple forecast demand feature. And really we want you to be able to, to use this um, data to support your internal goals and targets, but also help meet state regulations. So we started our initial software back in 2016. It was really focused on meeting water efficiency and drought regulations, um, and it was paid through our membership dues. What we're offering today, um, what we're talking about here is version 2.0, we're calling it Wavelet. And this um, updated platform has more use cases beyond just conservation. And we're able to provide a free version because we received a very generous um, grant from the United States Bureau of Reclamation to provide this uh, free version to any California urban water supplier. So the way our software works is, you know, as a retail water agency, you know, you're collecting your data in your billing system. And then if you choose to use the software, it would be uploaded into Wavelet where we analyze it or just, you know, clean it up, make sure everything, the fields are all correct. And then it gets deployed in these different dashboards. Um, security and confidentiality are paramount. And so we don't collect any customer identifying information that remains in your software. We're really just interested in how much do the customer use? What type of customer were they um, or are they and their service location? So once we've gotten this information, deployed it in the dashboards, then really we want you to be able to use this in the ways that make sense for you, whether that's looking at your conservation programs and their impact, complying with you know, state regulations, or just helping you improve your planning process. So when we started looking at the update and talking to members, they really wanted a little bit of something for their whole team, not just conservation. And so we've got something for customer service, water resources, ops, and GIS. 
And so these are the different features of Wavelet. So everything on the left comes with the free version that you can access starting today. Um, it is, the free version is what we call self-service. So this is where you would be uploading your consumption or your build data directly into Wavelet. And if you have um, the State Department of Water Resources landscape area measurement data for your uh, residential customers, you can also upload that into the software. Once we've collected it, we're gonna plot that um, data and look at annual water use trends by your customer class with an end of year projection. And you can toggle this information between calendar year and fiscal year. We also show usage trends compared to local weathers like reference evapotranspiration and precipitation. And you have the ability to segment your customers by class, by rate code, by water use, landscape area, percent of budget, water use percentile, and more. There's also a mapping feature, so you can see customers over your, your service area and at the parcel level. And you can drill down to your individual customers. So we have a full profile for your individual customer that includes demographics, as well as a water budget calculator that we've developed for all single family and irrigation customers. You can also classify your CII customers by the new um, state regulations soon to be adopted. Um, and then we can benchmark and look at your top users or inefficient users over time, including your, those CII categories. So that comes with, that's everything in the free version. And then we do have some premium um, features that I'll highlight as well. So um, the difference between the free and the premium are that in order to access the premium, you do need to become a member of the CADC, either at the analytics or the AMI subscription level. So under the premium, you get all the free features, Plus, we work with your IT team to help with automated uploads of your billing and your LAM data. We've got pre-built reports for irregular use and inefficient use. You can create custom segments um, manually by you know, looking at these aerial maps or batch uploads or individually, customer by customer. You can track the water demand of your customer segments over time. And we even have a polygon measurement feature so you can map out irrigable area or landscaped area um, for your customers. And we have a water use objective dashboard um, that really is a calculator to show you how, um, you know, if you're in compliance or will be in compliance across these new, uh, you know, regulations that are coming to it into effect. And in 2025, and I'll share this at the end, we're even, you know, thinking about updated features to this, including some more conservation program analytics that will build into it. So there are a few sample use cases uh, for conservation that I'll be going through today. So the first one we'll be looking at is, are we saving water year over year and meeting efficiency targets? If we're looking at our local weather conditions. You know, what are some of the seasonal or drought response programs should we consider? And who are the most inefficient users? Where are they located? What demographics and characteristics do they share? And how can this inform our programs? What programs or resource would best suit an individual customer that is consistently over their estimated water budget? And how can this data be used to inform management, the board, regulators, and potential grant funders? So with that, I'm gonna open up uh, Wavelet and walk you through our demo. So in this demo, we're gonna be exploring how Watertown Water District uses Wavelet to gain key insights into when, where, and how customers are using water to help inform water demand and supply de decisions. But we're really gonna focus on its conservation features because this was really important to our members. It was their number one priority in this update, uh, but they also wanted the design to be intuitive and have lots of flexible functionality. Again, safety, security, and confidentiality are paramount to us. So I just wanna note that all of the demo data that you see here was obtained from open source data from the city of Santa Monica. That data was then randomized. So all of the data you see, it's not, um, it's not connected to any individual customer and doesn't reflect any of their actual customers uh, that you're gonna see today. Um, with that, I'm just gonna start walking you through the features. So if you look at the top left, you'll see um, the agency name and their logo. And to the right of that, you'll see a global search bar. So let's say customer service or conservation coordinator, you wanna search by an address you can type in the address here and it would show the different um, you know, addresses similar to that. Further to the right, you'll see in a little alert, it says a data gap. 
So this is just a way um, for, for you to know if the information is up to date. Um, if we're expecting monthly billing and it's been over a month and we haven't received an upload, this would this alert would come up. And then you have your user profile and, and user access level. Below that, you'll see these five tabs here. And I wanna point out that reports and what are you subjective tabs, they're only gonna show up if you're a member of the CAC, CABC at the analytics or the AMI subscription level. Um, we built in you know, a lot of flexibility with our visualizations and clean designs. And I'm gonna scroll down so you can see um, this first um, dashboard. So you can see here total usage by calendar year, um, you can easily toggle between calendar year or fiscal year, and you can also see information in charts and tables. All of this information is downloadable for you to be able to do more analysis or reporting. So with this first dashboard, really the use case is, you know, are we saving water year over year and meeting efficiency targets? So maybe you, there's some state regulations or you're in a drought response and your agency needs to cut back a certain volume of water, like two acre feet, well, this dashboard can really help you see the big picture and if you're meeting that goal. So you'll see on the right that these fields are, are empty and that is um, because it's only available with the premium version. But on the left, you'll see the percent change compared to previous years. Um, you can even slide this tab down here to see um, past years. And let's just say, you know, if we're looking at 2020, we see that there was a, you know, an 8% bump. Um, and you can even toggle between your customer classes um, and see what was going on in those individual classes. So if we go back to 2020, we can see and the residential customers went up 9%, which we would have expected um, because of the COVID lockdown um, restrictions. Um, so if we look at the information in fiscal year, see it slightly changes. And then if we look at it at a table, you can see all of this information here. I do wanna note, um, if you download the table, you just click that icon and it will download as a CSV file. Anytime you see a chart and you hit the download button, that will be saved as a PNG file. If we scroll further down this first page, we'll see more detailed information about local weather conditions. And this might help us determine what seasonal or drought response programs we might wanna consider, or if we should increase our outreach efforts during a certain time of the year, depending on what that local weather is. Um, I do wanna point out that we are looking at reference evapotranspiration. So this is the amount of water that's lost to evaporation and plant transpiration to keep um, turf healthy and green. Um, you're also seeing precipitation data. So the ETO or reference evapotranspiration data is coming from the state CIMIS, and it is weighted from the 10 nearest CIMIS stations in the service area, whereas the precipitation data is coming from PRISM, and that's what spatial CIMIS uses. And again, you can toggle between calendar and fiscal year. You can also see it as a table, and all of this information is downloadable. So I'm going to scroll back up because um, now we want to take a look at um, our customers and look at this use case. So here you'll be able to see um, your customer usage trends by customer class, such as residential, commercial, industrial, institutional, irrigation, and other, other being like fire and sprinklers. So if you click on residential, you'll be able to drill down into your multifamily and single family customers. And for commercial and institutional, we've got that new list of CII accounts, um, you know, based on the state uh, regulations that are coming up. But I do want to make it clear that this is a manual process. We don't have a way to automate and tag um, customers by these different categories, but I'll show you um, how to manually do it in just a minute. So we're going to go back to all of our customers and we're going to take a look at some of the, the details here. So you can see um, that these are all of our customers and all of our rate codes. Um, so we've got 5,695 um, customers that we're seeing. Uh, there are 20 rate codes, and this is the amount of water they've used 
since we've been collecting the data. We started collecting this data in 2016. So that's between now and it's ended in, we got, the last upload for this was in December of 23. So I want to um, just scroll down a little bit so you can see this first visualization on the metrics. Um, and then we can look at it as a chart and you can see the monthly usage by all customers over time. So if we click on the table, we can see it's broken down even further and all of these visualizations are downloadable. If we scroll down even further, I'm gonna come down here. Uh, we can see that the percent of total use by customer class year over year with the option to see it as a percent or a volume. And you can also see it as a table. And again, all of that is downloadable. And if we scroll further down the page, we can see total usage by customer class um, and calendar year over year versus annual reference evapotranspiration. So we would expect to see, you know, especially for our dedicated irrigation meters, that when the ETO is higher, this you know, normally would be a little bit higher. But in this case, maybe this particular agency, you know, had a lot of really well-funded and concentrated conservation efforts. And that's why their usage has continued to go down. So those are the features right here that I wanted to show. And now we're gonna scroll back up and I wanna show you our mapping feature. So here you're gonna see this service area boundary. You're gonna see a lot of uh, colored dots with numbers, which don't really mean anything. It's really just a clustering feature of the software. But as we zoom in, we'll be able to see um, all of our customers uh, because we've selected all customers in this view. Um, and the different colored dots represent how much water they're using. So the dark green means they use very little and the dark purple means they use a lot. So this might help you um, just you know at a high level look for areas with higher usage um, and you can gain some information about, you know, there's different types of customer customers and maybe the land use that they're in. And that might help inform some of the programs you want to consider. So up the top right here, it says it's displaying 5,695 customers. You can see this, this is showing in a map, but you can also see it in the satellite view. And let's just say we wanted to take a little bit closer look at a particular area that may have some higher water using um, homes. If you just um, hover over, you'll see some more information about the customer, their account number, their address, <clears throat> their most recent usage that we have, uh, the percentile um, usage, how much they're using um, that month and what their budget was. And then the parcel data that's showing here, this is the DWR landscape area measurement data. So I'm gonna go into mapping features a little bit more um, later on, but you can see, you know, the different um, types of functionality that we have so far. So I'm gonna take us back up a little bit because look, I wanna start drilling down into our individual customers. So let's look at our residential customers. We're gonna click on single family. And now we're gonna be able to see um, all of our single family customers and we have some filtering options. So down below, we can see that there's over 2000 uh, customers, three rate codes and the amount of water that they've used. Um, but I wanna walk you through another use case. So if we wanna find out who our most inefficient users are, like maybe we wanna see who's in the top 20% or top 2.5%, we can easily do that by clicking on this all filters button. You'll see a pop-up and then we'll be able to slice and dice our customers by address, by water type, date ranges, rate codes, usage percentiles, billing usage, percent of budget, irrigable area and demographics. So in this use case, we wanna see who our top 20% are. So we click that and then hit apply. And now we're seeing 298 um, customers, but maybe we wanna drill down even further and just look at the, la the customers over the last 12 months. And it brings us down to 236 customers. So 
if we scroll down a little bit more, you can see um, you can see this data in a chart, in a table, and we can also see the individual customers. Uh, and I think this is really valuable. So you can even set um, the number of rows that you wanna see at one time, either by clicking default, or you can put in a custom number, like maybe you wanna see 112 at one time. Uh, I also wanna bring your attention to the header. So anywhere you see these arrows, that means you can sort by that, uh, by that field. So you can, you know, like I said, slice and dice this in, in many different ways. So let's take a look at an individual customer, choose this one, and you'll get another pop-up which has um, information about that particular customer, their address, you'll see them on a map, you'll see some usage and some demographic information and some different um, charts and graphs. And if we expand this, we can see this in a, in a little bit bigger view with a little bit more information. And you'll see all the customer information at the top up here. Um, we have a couple of you know, areas that are blocked off and are only available in the premium. And I'll go over what those are later. But you can see just looking at the map that um, this is a, a larger home. It's got a pool, the meters located in the alley. And if we scroll even further down on this page, we'll see um, some usage and demographic information. So all the way to the left, we can see the 12 month average budget and usage and the average percent of budget that was used. We can also see how many bills they, um, they had over the budget over the last year. And, you know, Given you know, the information that we're seeing already, we can see that um, this customer is using a lot of water, they've been over budget 100% of the time, and they've got a large landscape. So they might benefit from some kind of conservation support, especially around landscaping. But as we move um, further to the right, we'll see some demographic information, household income, household size, and building age. This data is being pulled from NAEP data. And then you'll see that we have three different landscape um, square footage uh, data sets. So this one called provided, um, this is where a water agency that had developed um, their own landscape measurements, maybe because they have water budget-based rates, or maybe they've already done some preemptive work for the upcoming state regulations. If they've provided their own landscape area measurements, this would be under provided. Uh, for estimated, these are um, this is a data set that the C CADC created along with Claremont Graduate University with grant funding from the Water Foundation. And then if we have the DWR landscape area measurement data, that will show up here. In this case, irrigable area includes um, the irrigated area as well as the pool. So we haven't pulled out the pool uh, for this particular customer. Um, if we move further down, then we can get into our um, budget calculator. So we've provided an estimated efficient water budget for every single family and irrigation customer. And essentially it's based on these efficiency factors um, and you can play around with it. So if you wanted to, um, you know, maybe there's a conversion, a landscape conversion program that you're implementing and you, you want to see how this customer's budget might fare under different scenarios, you can certainly do that. So any of these fields here, um, you can play around with. So the ETAEF, this is the landscape efficiency factor. Maybe we want to play around with that and drop it down to 0.6. Maybe we want to change the landscaped area and see what would happen there. Maybe we've been in touch with these folks and we know they actually have like four people living in the home. So we can play around with it. And now you can see that the budget has, has changed. They're still significantly over their budget for this time period. And you can select what that is. Um, so this just gives you, you know, another way to see how your customers are doing compared to these um, efficiency standards. Uh, to the right, you'll see another calculator, irrigable area estimator. And this function is only available in the premium. And I'll show you that in just a little bit. So if we scroll further down this page, 
Uh, we can look at some annual trends, uh, their budget versus usage, and you can look at this um, over time. And you can drop down this menu to look at different years. You can also see this in a table and you can download the information. We also uh, below that have uh, their usage and budget compared to evapotranspiration. Uh, if we scroll back a little bit, we can see because the data ended in 2023 for this agency. You can also see it as a line chart. You can also look at different years and you can see it in a table and you can download any of this information. So if we scroll even further, we can see this customer on the map. We know this one is our customers because uh, it has the little blue dot behind the purple one. And um, we can also click on satellite. And now we can zoom in a little bit more. We can see these two customers. Um, the interesting thing about this um, visualization is you can choose uh, the date ranges, you can choose the proximity, and you can choose whether or not you want to see only similar homes with, you know, the same demographics and um, number of people per household, things like that, or you can see all the nearby, um, all the nearby neighbors within these two parameters. So you can see it as a chart, you can see it as a table, and you can download all of that information. So those are all the free features um, of Wavelet. And now I'm gonna hop over to our premium features um, that come with the analytics or AMI membership level. So when we first open um, Wavelet for this customer, we'll see that the um, forecasting information has been populated. And we can see that you know we're we're trending a little bit higher, about five percent for the rest of this year, and it looks like all of the customer classes um, have gone up so far. We can also look at you know how that pans out for those individual rate uh, class uh, customer classes. The other thing I want to bring to your attention are a couple of default reports that we have. So there are two monthly default reports that um, based on what our members most frequently wanted to see at their fingertips. So the first one is an irregular usage report. Sometimes it's called an exceptions report. And then the other one is an inefficient usage report. So I'm going to click on irregular usage report. And you can see that you can um, choose a, a, a year and look at different months within those years. And there are different threshold settings that you can set. So let's take a look at the threshold settings so you can get a better understanding of what we're actually um, displaying here. So the thresholds can be used to compare current month usage to previous month and same month previous year in order to flag those customers that have irregular use. And that could be either high or low um, usage compared to a historical use. Um, so you have the option to put in, um, you know, CCF, if you want to do 200 CCF, or if you want to do zero C CCF to look for fail or failing uh, meters, you can also um, change the threshold. So right now it's set to 69 CCF with a percent change plus or minus 50%. And so what we see is a group of um, customers that meet this criteria. And we've got over, you know, we've got 1,600 residential customers, 300 CII customers, 49 irrigation customers, and seven other customers that are falling within in this range. Um, we can see them on a table, and we can also see them in a map. And if we zoom in, we can see where all 2,000 customers are located. So I'm gonna go back to the metrics and I'm gonna scroll down a little bit so you can see some more information. So this is just another visualization of customers from that time period. So looking at the most recent um, billing period 
compared to the previous billing period and then compare to the same year, uh, same month previous year. So we can see in this first um, customer, their fire account. And this spark line is showing that somewhere in 20, you know, in 2023, they started having irregular use based on those thresholds. Maybe there was a fire, maybe they did some kind of, you know, additional hydrant testing or sprinkler testing, but it gives us an idea that maybe we want to do a little bit more investigating. And the reason that we chose to include this as a default report is one of our members um, had used irregular usage data to find their large landscapes with dedicated irrigation meters. And they were expecting to find the, these customers were using substantial amounts of water, and but in fact, they were using very little. And so they had their uh, meter readers go out to investigate and they found that several of the meters or registers were failing or had failed. And so they did a major meter replacement project and they were able to save over a million dollars. So just the importance of, of having good data and using it. So I wanna show you the inefficient um, usage report. And again, we can see a very similar to the irregular use. You can sort by year, sort by month, and there are thresholds that you can set. Um, in this case, the thresholds are, are comparing current month usage to the current month budget. So you can see the customers with inefficient use um, over the past 12 months. And so you can set the minimum percent over, over their uh, percent over bills over budget and the current month. So you have those two options. And this is based on what our members wanted to see in this particular report. I do wanna note that anytime you change the threshold settings, either for irregular or inefficient usage, um, those changes will not take effect until the next billing upload. So it's not an immediate, uh, it's not an immediate change. So now I wanna take you back to um, our customers. And I wanna show you the mapping feature. So let's drill down into our customers and look for some areas that might have some high water users. Um, so like maybe right here, got a lot of purple. So we can use the polygon feature and you can Let's just map out these two blocks uh, because we want to come back and maybe we have a, you know, we've done a little bit more digging. We found that they have some uh, larger landscapes or maybe there's, you know, something that we want to do around landscaping with them. So we can either create a new segment um, or if there are already segments existing that we want to include them in, can just hit include and apply. It's now you can see them that it, that that was successful. And if you want to view your segment, it will take you to that list of um, customers. You can download this segment. You can unassign all of them. You can unassign a few of them. You can add more. So there's a lot of flexibility in how you're able to segment those customers. So there's another way that you can um, segment customers as well. And I'm gonna bring you back to an individual customer. So I'm gonna go to back to the table tab. And uh, let's take a look at this customer. Again, you'll get that pop-up window. We'll expand it so we can get some more insights. So this is a commercial customer. And now these two um, features have been unlocked under the premium. And so we're gonna use it and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So we can see on the map that um, this maybe looks like an office building. They've got quite a bit of climate appropriate landscaping. Uh, let's see what kind of businesses are in here. It looks like GoodRx. Um, has their office here and Activation Blizzard, which I know from my husband is a gaming company. So likely this is an office building. And we can click on this drop down menu 
and search for office. And now we're gonna add them to that segment. We know it's been done successfully, but we can't also unassign them as well. And, um, you know, looking at this particular customer, we see a lot of big cooling towers and maybe that's a program we're offering or we wanna offer. And so we can tag them here. I know it's already done, but um, we wanna get them into that program. So we'll hit apply. And then when we go to our reports, it will show up here. So we have under the custom segments, we have the customers that are listed under there. So next I wanna share with you our water use objective dashboard. Uh, so this comes with a premium feature and I know that the regulations have not been adopted yet. So this is really just for demo purposes only. And it's a calculator to help you see if you're meeting your objective and your targets over time and you know how, how that might affect your overall compliance. It also has a variance and bonus water calculator. And for those of you that aren't as familiar with the state's proposed water efficiency regulations, please bear with me. Um, it is a complex set of requirements that essentially sets a water budget for every urban water supplier in California. Um, this budget is composed of standards. There's a standard for efficient indoor and outdoor residential water use. There's a standard for efficient commercial landscapes that have dedicated irrigation meters. And there's a standard for minimal system-wide water loss. Agencies do have the ability to ask for more water if there are you know, special circumstances. Um, but in order to be in compliance, an agency has to meet the overall target, not the, the water use for each standard. And there are very specific milestones that um, you have to hit for these efficiency targets. And so this calculator is really designed to help you um, see how well you're doing and if you're gonna meet compliance and in what years you may or may not be in compliance. So let's take a look at this first um, part of the dashboard. You'll see this is the total water use objective. You can change it um, you know, by these milestone years. And because this is demo purpose only, um, we can see residential outdoor, we've got our residential indoor standard and our CII DIM. And so this is the acre feet of water that make up each of these standards, as well as the overall percent um, within that overall budget, which is right here on the left. On the left-hand side, you'll see um, all of the what we call the qualifying water uses that make up this objective and the sources of data that they were pulled from. But you have the ability to um, go in and change this. Obviously it doesn't change what's happening on the state end, but this is just for your, your own purposes to see what that might, you know, what, what the budget would look like um, if you were to change these individual volumes. Um, just for demo purposes, we don't have the total water losses. So you can just see that uh, we don't have water loss and we haven't included anything for variances or recycled bonus water in this scenario. So if we scroll down, um, because we're collecting your consumption and usage data, we can see usage versus the objective. So here, that's this first part. This is the overall water use objective and your usage. And then we've broken it down into those individual standards, as well as if we had you know, applied for and or received any variances, we can put that information in this um, calculator. If we move even further down, we can see the water use objective. And I do wanna call out here, we've got definitions and all the information about where the data is coming from and the different formulas that are used for each of these standards. So here we're showing actual water use versus the regulation milestones. So we've got all of the milestone years at the bottom, um, acre feet. And then at the top, we have the efficiency factor. So gallons per capita per day and the landscape efficiency factors all trend downward, meaning your customers need to use less water um, as time goes on. So usage is in uh, blue, your water use objective is in green. If there's any red, that means you're out of compliance and it shows you by how much and the percentage over budget you are. Um, 
when we when we look at this, we're really able to see, you know, like, okay, in 2035, we're going to be out of budget. And then we can go in and see what areas we're out of budget. So if we scroll even further down, we can see the, the residential um, water use objective. We can see definitions uh, and data input specifically for that. We also have some additional information up here just for ease of use. So when you're talking about GPCD, it's important to understand what population data you're looking at. We also included the um, reference evapotranspiration, effective precipitation, and the total landscape square footage from the DWR lab data. And you can see all of this in a table format as well. And all of this information is downloadable. We also have the same type of information for a CII DEM water use objective. Um, in this case, you know, for the first several years, you're just using your actual water usage before that formula goes into effect. And if you want to know what that formula is or make any changes to either the residential landscape factors or GPCD, this is where you would do it on the left hand side. So you see, um, we start here with residential um, indoor standard. And if you wanted to play around with these factors and see what happens, you can. Also your population. So let's say you, you're you know, in an area that's still being built out and you've got more land, you know, maybe a whole new neighborhood coming online and your population is going to increase and you want to see what will happen there. Or maybe you've got seasonal population and you want to see what that looks like. Again, you can play around with those numbers on the left-hand side. Same thing for the landscape standard. Um, maybe ET is different. Maybe you're getting, um, maybe you have different, you know, weather station data that you're purchasing and you wanted to change that. You can do that here. Um, your landscape area, maybe you've taken out some residential landscaped area and put that into your CII dedicated irrigation meter standard. So you can play around with those numbers, um, you know, really as much as you want. Um, it is important to note um, the CII DEM landscape area. This is something you have to come up with. DWR is providing base layer um, aerial imagery, but you actually have to go in and measure the landscapes for all of your dedicated irrigation meters. That's not a part of the packet that they're providing for you. So this number you will actually have to fill in yourself along with any special landscape area you've measured out. Uh, water loss standards, um, again, this is something that um, you, you're already reporting to the state and our system will be able to capture that and put that here, or you can put in custom values. And then here's where you have the variance and bonus water calculator. So you can look at the, uh, the different variances, choose the one you want, put in the acre feet, you can select a year that you want it to take a, an effect, and you can add as many variances as you want. And then um, with the bonus, a recycled water bonus, you can add, you know, those two, uh, you can add that custom field here and acre feet, um, and whether it's existing or other. I do wanna note that all of the information you're seeing is in acre feet. Um, the regulations currently are asking for all of the data in gallons, but it's just too much and too messy to show you know, visually in a dashboard. So if you do download any of this information, you will have to um, do that conversion to gallons if that continues to be in the finalized regulations. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you um, is how data gets uploaded into the system. So this is where the sync data tab comes into play if you are using free wavelet, you're not a member of CADC and you're using the free wavelet, this is where you would go to upload your billing data. So you would just um, get the file here and we have information on what fields are necessary um, and how to upload that. Uh, we also have the ability to, um, for you to upload your landscape area measurement. And then you get some identifying information like when the last upload was done and who, who uploaded it. Um, so you can, and you'll get an alert if any of that data is not correct and may needs, it, it needs a little bit of um, support and help. So if you are a paid member of the CADC, we work with your IT team to do those automated uploads. So it's just a lot easier overall. But that 
is really it for today. That's um, everything I had to show you for Wavelet, but I do wanna just share a couple of other um, things with you, like how do you actually get it? <laughs> so um, you can go to wavelet.thecadc.org. Um, you do have to register and there are terms of service that you need to agree to. So essentially it's a non-disclosure agreement, but also um, just making sure you understand that you know your data is your data. We don't share it with anybody. No one else can access your data um, and that you have the authority to be able to upload and use the data for your agency. Um, if you're interested in becoming a member of the CADC, we'd love to have you and join our growing community. Um, and you can get access to the premium features uh, through the analytics or AMI subscription. And that is based on the total number of connections in your retail service area. So what's next? We're already thinking of version 3.0. Um, what we're looking to do next is integrate what you've seen today with our AMI data storage and reporting. We've just been uh, notified of another USBR grant that we've been awarded. It's a $400,000 grant. And we are gonna be using that to provide more AMI data support um, and open data resources. And we're also gonna enhance the conservation program impact analysis. So um, in the past, we had in our previous software, the ability for you to upload your rebate, your conservation rebate program information for individual customers. And we wanna go above and beyond just rebates. So any type of conservation intervention that you've implemented um, for a particular customer, we would be able to show that in the dashboard and then help you know do some analytics around how impactful how effective they are, things like that. For those of you that aren't familiar with what our AMI reporting um, or query and storage capabilities are, we work with all the AMI vendors um, around. We have a, an unlimited data storehouse, a warehouse called Snowflake. And from there, we're able to take that data and either build custom queries or help your IT team to build uh, reports that you guys need to use on a daily basis. So I hope that you reach out if you have questions, uh, want to learn more, feel free to go to our website, find out more, and also access Wavelet from there. And I also wanted to invite all of you to our California Water Data Summit. This is the ninth one we're holding. It's our flagship data event. It's going to be August 15th and 16th at the University of San Diego. You can register here. And with that, um, I'll take questions. So if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat um, or Q&A. Hi, everyone. <laughs> So yeah, I hopefully um, was able to share with you the highlights of Wavelet. Um, hopefully you can you know, see how you might start thinking about use cases for your own agency and, and if this software is something that's gonna help you, you know, meet your, you know, your own goals and, and targets or even with the state. Yeah, I can share the link, absolutely. So let me go back up to that. There you go. And yeah, so everyone, um, we have recorded this session. It'll be, um, I'll try to get up on our YouTube later this afternoon. It takes a little while for the recording to download. So once that's um, done, it'll be on our YouTube channel. And because you attended this webinar, you'll get an email notification uh, of when that um, recording is available. Yep, yeah, and the event is in San Diego. It's at the University of San Diego, which is honestly one of the most beautiful campuses I've ever been on. It's right on the, <laughs> it's got an amazing view of the ocean. It's pretty cool. So the question is, does Wavelet require monthly meter reads or AMI interval reads? Great question. So Wavelet is just for your build consumption data and we take it however you want to upload it, either monthly or bi-monthly. Currently it's not, taking the AMI data, that's what this new grant that we're gonna be working on will help us to integrate those two software systems into one. But right now, AMI is a separate um, component. 
Hopefully that answered your question. Yeah, so if you're if you're a member of the CADC, um, joining at the analytics or AMI, yeah, absolutely. We provide technical support. Um, the free version is really designed as a self-serve. So um, we just don't have the bandwidth to be able to provide as, as much services as we would like to for the free version. Um, but yeah, if you are a member, absolutely. And I will be happy to go to the screen with our summit. I'm also um, curious, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Oh, it looks like I messaged the links directly to you, Kim. I was trying to share them with everyone. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you want to resend it? Yeah, I just did. Okay. Yeah, we're going to put the links in there. Okay. Yeah, so part of um, membership with CADC we really kind of act as like an extension of your staff. So we, in addition to just the product itself, we do work with our members on smaller analytics projects um, as part of the membership. So if there's, you know, a couple of questions or maybe, you know, 10 to 20 hours of work on a project that would be covered under your subscription fee. We have another question. Are there customer classes customizable in any way? Can we run reports based on your own rate codes? Um, so the customer classes, uh, right now we just have those major blocks of so residential, commercial, um, irrigation, and other. And then you can nest your your different, you know, classes under those or rate codes under those. Um, at this time, you know, we yeah, and you can look at, you can filter your customers by rate codes. So you could, you know, do some analysis that way, look at water use over time by rate code and maybe, you know, help inform a rate study you're doing. Any other questions, comments? Chris, do you have anything you want to add? No, nothing to add. Just just here in case there are any que additional questions. Awesome. Well, I think that's everything we had to, to share with you all today. Um, but we will be posting this on our YouTube. You'll get an email um, with a link to that recording and a way to access Wavelet directly. Um, but otherwise, we hope to see you at an upcoming webinar or workshop or the summit. And feel free to reach out to me. You have, you'll have my email on this PowerPoint. Um, and yeah, we're here for you guys. So thanks so much for your time. Oh, there's a question here about the data summit. Okay. You want to read it? Uh, just... When do you expect the agenda for the data summit to be released? Yes, very soon. We're finalizing it tomorrow. So it will be up hopefully by the end of the week. <laughs> and you can see that on our website. It's going to be a great lineup. We're super excited about this year. <laughs>